Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, in this uh, session we are going to talk about conversation. The last uh, topic that we had taken off was on speaking skills and uh, conversation obviously is a more holistic context within which uh, speaking is a subset and listening is the other subset. And uh, the entire interaction process is something which we are taking into account when we are talking about conversation. We are also taking into account uh, the ambience. We are also taking into account non-verbal communication and a number of other things. So, <coughs> what I would like to do is uh, start off by outlining the various things that we are going to do together. So, we will be talking about the a series of activities at least three different activities that I will try to design in some way which I can share with you. We will talk a little about silence. Silence is relevant in the context of uh, let us say conversations. Uh, that take place. In, in fact, when I talk about silence, I will show you an interesting graph, uh, which long time back one of my students shared with me and that also probably will give us insights into the way we converse. We will talk about the details of the processes involved in conversation. We will talk about different kinds of masks that we wear when we interact with people, contexts and then we will sum up the entire thing. So, <coughs> now let us imagine the first activity. Now, you see that uh, we are in a situation where uh, I would not be able to actually do an activity with you. I can definitely identify links and I will definitely share them on the discussion forum, uh, where you can go to those uh, places and see uh, how people converse when we take into consideration an activity like this. When two people are standing back to back, the focus is it is pretty awkward. Let me share with you. Uh, when you realize that uh, you can just turn around and have a look at one another, the tendency to turn and look behind you is very strong. I have found that with my students. But the idea is that when you are doing that, uh, you suddenly realize that uh, you are using your hands, you are using your facial expressions, and the other person is actually not able to see that. So, what it basically means is that you turn around and uh, you you look at your friend and you start conversing. You say the same thing all over again and you find that a lot more information is available. So, we suddenly realize that uh, conversation is not just about the text that you are communicating or the voice that you are using. Because yes, uh, we have we have already talked about speaking skills, we have talked about voice and we know that they are relevant. But you suddenly realize that uh, when you turn around and you speak, there is a lot more information through other channels like facial expressions and the body and its gestures. And when that happens, maybe the, the, the entire way of communicating also has to change. So, here is an interesting issue that we have in mind, uh, an interesting issue that we have to keep in mind an issue about which we need to develop sensitivity, which is that imagine that you are talking to somebody over the phone or over the mobile. Imagine you are talking to somebody who is not present over there. Probably, you will have to do a lot more with your, your what you are saying that is the text that you are using as well as your voice, because a lot of information is missing. Whether you are smiling, the other person is not able to know, whether you actually attentive to the other person because eye contact is not possible, whether you are enthusiastic or not. Now, the, these are things which are not impossible to know over the phone, unless these are communicated either through your words or through the kind of intonation, the kind of speech pattern, the kind of voice uh, that you are using. You are bringing in enthusiasm into your voice, excitement into your voice, sadness into your voice. Now, these emotions which generally get very easily reflected 
through the other two nonverbal modes facial expressions, gestures and postures combined is something which is missing. So, this is something which you can try out. I would definitely recommend that you do it with your one of your friends and just get to know how you experience, what kind of an experience you are having. So, this is the first activity I would suggest to you. The second one is listening. Now, in conversation as I told you speaking and listening are combined and uh, we, you ask two people to converse, one speaks and the other acts as if he is not listening or not interested in listening. Now, we talked about it uh, in the earlier uh, classes, in the earlier sessions, but this is a first an experience of how it feels. If you are play acting this, you will suddenly realize that when the other person is just not listening to you or acting as if he is listening to you in a half hearted way, then how bad it feels. So, one of the things I said with you earlier is something which you can actually experience over here. Now, the next time you do it, you see what he, you ask the person to act as if he is listening. Now, this second activity is going to help us in two different ways. One is that you actually genuinely feel the difference, but more important than that, you start noticing what are the tools that he is using in order to communicate that he is interested or she is interested. And when you are role playing as if you are interested to listen, try to make an assessment of what are the tools that you are using to communicate that you are interested. Now, this will give you an insight into how exactly you are using the totality of your body, your eye contact, voice, body language, smile, facial expressions and how these significantly manage to communicate the level of your attention. So, you remember in the earlier classes we talked about maintaining eye contact, establishing attention, be attentive, but how exactly are you being attentive? Maybe inside deep down you are being attentive, but is the other person able to know that you are being attentive? Now, that is very, very important and these activities would be able to make you realize this. So, the strategy side of it. The third one is where the listening part is actively engaged. We have done it in the third session when we talked about listening. So, ask two people to communicate a complex message. The first person speaks, the second person paraphrases is how much of it has been transmitted. Because uh, you see that uh, when the content load of a message increases, then the ability to remember it decreases, there is forgetting. How much of it are we able to remember and which components are we able to remember? Because our life is full of conversations and we do not go around uh, with a recorder or we do not go around taking notes all the time. So, how is it that we strategically use our minds to filter out the important information. Now, here is a practice okay. and the th fourth activity is the, the second activity here that is is to do it uh, back to back. So, that uh, that gives you an idea of a uh, four telephony conversation where the other clues are missing and you still have to retain that information. Please remember that remembering is always uh, more intense. Okay. Memory is strengthened when multiple channels are used to provide the same information. So, when the same information has multiple channels, you are speaking, you are in a particular, you are standing in a particular place, uh, there is a particular smell or a sound around you, all these things trigger memory. So, the memory becomes richer and remembering is easier. When you are conversing with somebody over the phone, that does not happen. So, you will have to uh, probably develop new strategies. Okay. And uh, when we discuss that, we will try to find out what are the strategies you are using. That will be fun, that will be exciting when, when you find out, we try to find out how you are trying to negotiate these problems. Now, silence is something which uh, forms a very significant part of our lives. To begin with, without silence, uh, things would gel together, things would combine together and we would not be able to make sense of them. So, silence in that sense is important. Silence is also symbolic of space. Silence is also sometimes symbolic of understanding and uh, you see that uh, although I will not elaborate on these stories, there are many Buddhist stories uh, which are about the Buddha's silence 
and yet in a certain way these silences do communicate. So, for instance, the story of the arrow is where uh, uh, we are told that uh, when the Buddha was asked about uh, questions like uh, uh, what is the meaning of life, uh, where do we go after death, are, are, is there a heaven up there, is there a hell down there and questions like that, he used to keep silent. And uh, we have a story okay, put in his mouth as to why he used to keep silent and the Lord would say that uh, if somebody puts an arrow into your body, what are you going to do? Are you going to take out the arrow or are you going to ask from which direction they did, did the arrow come? Does the arrow have three feathers or five feathers? It, does it have a metal head? Is it straight or is it arched? You are not going to ask these questions. So, life as it is is full of suffering. We have a lot of difficulties and our primary purpose is to how to extract ourselves from these difficulties and from the suffering. Rather than asking whether after death there is another life, what kind of rewards we might possibly have, because this life, this suffering is what we are immediately concerned with. So, it was in these circumstances we have cases of silence. So, the reason I brought in silence here in this particular context is to make you realize that silence plays a very important in conversation, silence does manage to communicate, silence creates a certain degree of significance or importance about a particular thing and you can make use of silence in many strategic ways. One of them was the way the Buddha used silence for a certain period of time in order to be wild at the people and then to give a parable as a response after a break, after the silence in order to make his case much more meaningfully, much more powerfully. So, that is one of the things I am just sharing with you. I do not know how you are going to use silence, but that can always be used by you in very, very meaningful ways in conversation. Of course, you silence is very often a way, way of saying that you are angry with somebody, but well that is not the only way. Silence is a way of understanding as we have realized in the context of listening skills, but think of other imaginative ways that silence can be used and share it with us when you discuss over the, fo over the forum. Now, the other thing I would like to make uh, is uh, by way of an illustration as to the possibility of silence or lack of silence uh, when we actually uh, converse. So, as I told you a little earlier, one of my one of my students a long time back showed me three graphs and I would like to share these three graphs with you. I believe uh, initially they would look uh, fairly dense and complicated, but at some point of time probably you would be able to make sense of it. As I was able to make sense of it, when I saw it being drawn by one of my students. Now, what he told me was that uh, these three graphs kind of represent three different cultures and the way that silence is used in these cultures. The first one let us say is an American culture, where this part shows one person speaking and this part shows the other person speaking. So, if this is A and this is B, this is a conversation going on. There is no silence in between, but there is just a small break. The moment somebody stops communicating, the other person starts communicating. The second one is an example of the Japanese way of communicating, where you see that the first person speaks. This is followed by the second person speaking after a pause and here is the silence part of it. Okay. So, silence plays a very significant role over here and so the conversation continues and this is the Indian way of speaking, where you find that both the people, both the people, are, both the people are speaking at the same time. So, the conversation is not really conversation it is a kind of a noise, because everybody is trying to speak at the same point of time. So, there is no scope for even a pause, forget about silence. So, this is a very humorous way of looking at the way that conversations also take place in different cultures. Even within the Indian culture, there are different communities which converse in different ways. This is just to make you aware of cultural differences and the role that silence pauses or the lack of pauses play in these different cultures. 
because when we are talking about conversation, uh, we one of the important things is the culture within which the conversation is taking place. Now you see that uh, what is conversation? Probably this is such a simple silly question that uh, we may not be interested to find the answer to this question, but uh, we are talking about either two people or more than two people who are speaking with one another uh, and trying to maybe communicate that is a conversation. And when we are talking about a conversation, uh, I can go back to uh, one, of the, one of the small anecdotes or episodes of my meeting a senior friend with whom I worked a long time back after a period of eight years. Now, this was a this was a conversation which probably to a certain extent was a one sided conversation in a certain way, because uh, he was talking about uh, his frustrations, uh, what he was son, his son was doing, what he was not doing and a wide range of things. But you find that uh, probably went on speaking for 20 minutes and I had to wait and uh, at various points of time, I was probably to a certain extent following the various things I have already shared with you and maybe in some cases I was not, but mostly I was the listener over there and at the end of it you see that he turned around and got down to thinking about what I had to share with him. I had to share with him something related to the sponsorship of an event for some of my students and I did not raise it directly, uh, but when uh, towards the end of the conversation, we had a conversation and he was curious to know if I had come for any specific reason other than the fact that we knew one another. And then when I put it casually, it kind of clicked and uh, he had absolutely no hesitations about it. So, one of the lessons that I learnt was that uh, this patience and uh, the relegating of an important thing to a non-important quarter in the context of sharing personal things, because their primacy was given to the fact that we were talking at a very personal level and we were talking about something which was very serious or of deep concern to him, probably made him realize uh, that whatever I had to share, which I did not directly share until he finally asked when I was leaving was also of some value and so he, he gave it a significant amount of value. So, this is the kind of lesson I learned from there that sometimes uh, patience, uh, a little bit of circ circumspection, a little bit of care and understanding can go a long way in a, having a very significant meaningful interpersonal communication as in the context of conversation. Now, processes involved, I told, told you about the various processes involved a little earlier. Now, we will talk about them in detail. Listening, we have already elaborated on that. Okay. We are listening obviously for the text, the language that somebody is speaking, we are listening for the style, the listening for the tone that we have already highlighted to a significant extent in the earlier sessions that we have had together. Now, we are talking, talking about speaking. In the context of speaking, again in the earlier lecture as well as here, I have told you that the language that you speak in is very significant. By language, I do not mean the, the etiquettes that you follow exactly, but what I mean to talk, communicate is the language should communicate certain things like politeness, concern, understanding, desire to share, interest and a few other such things. So, the, 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 say, the things that you say should obviously make these senses, communicate these to the other person. Style again, uh, when we talked about voice, we talked about style in a certain way and style is a very, very distinctive individual component, but it is to be considered. Some people have what can be considered bad styles, uh, lack of poor intonation, lack of pauses, uh, speaking very fast, speaking in a monotone. Now, these are some of the things uh, which can be barriers to effective communication and conversation and need to be taken care of. Tone of voice is something which we have already highlighted earlier, so I will not go into it. But there are a few other processes involved and this is the one which I will touch upon in a slightly elaborate way. 
uh, we talked about the earlier things in much greater uh, degree of detail. And when we are talking about body language in the context of conversation, probably it is important to uh, highlight some of these issues. Now, what I am going to do uh, is I will be sharing some slides with you and you please check them up when we are looking at the discussion forum and uh, with the material that I will be sharing with you, look up the links which deal with these concepts of distance, territory, eye contact, facial expression, gestures and postures. Now, we will start from the bottom because the, the ones at the bottom are easier to understand. Postures you take up can be of various kinds. You can take up an arrogant posture, you can take up a submissive posture, you can do all these things. Gestures, you can point to somebody or you can fold your hands behind you and uh, or you can rub your uh, chin or you can scratch your head, you can do all kinds of things. So, gestures again play a significant role in uh, what you are doing or you immediately cross fold your hands in front of you like this. All these things do manage to communicate a sense of intimacy or distance and we will be dealing with these in detail. Uh, first of all, when I show those pictures to you, you download those pictures, have a look and look at those pictures and try to interpret what they mean. That can be of course, in the be in the form of a survey, probably we will do it in the form of a survey. So, that we can get your generic responses, that how Indians in general feel about those postures, what do they communicate. Same with this, the same is the case with facial expressions about which we will, we'll, it is very obvious that facial expressions do communicate significantly. We will just try to find out how well you understand facial expressions when we detail out and uh, do facial expressions in a separate class. But gestures and conversation in the conversation context, we will be doing it probably in this particular session. So, you can go to the link and click the quiz and do a very short quiz which is about gestures. Eye contact is something which has been highlighted earlier, but the other two areas need to be highlighted territory and distance. Friends, uh, you feel that uh, animals talk about have territories, but human beings are also equally uh, sensitive about the concept of territory and we, we are very sensitive to the concept of territory throughout our lives and these concepts keep are relative and keep on changing. For instance, if I have a pen inside my pocket and somebody who does not know me, let us say tries to pick up this phone, this pen. Now, this is a very, very offensive kind of a situation because the pocket happens to be my territory and it is only an intimate friend that can access this territory and not anybody else or maybe a family member, maybe my daughter, but nobody else should be touching that bit. It is an offensive gesture. When we are conversing, uh, we, we need a certain amount of space also. So, distance, territory, these are linked with one another. And in a very interesting small study I did informally with my students, I found that uh, uh, when two strangers are conversing and if they happen to be male, male, males, men, then what happens is that the distance between them is roughly 2 feet. If two women are conversing, let us say, and they do not know one another, then the distance is kind of reduced. The women are fairly comfortable with a slightly lesser distance between them, something like maybe 18 inches to 16 to 18 inches. On the other hand, in the Indian cultural context, when a man and a woman who do not know one another are generally conversing, then we find that the distance is the greatest. It is roughly two and a half feet, there are roughly 30 inches that at which they are more or less comfortable talking to one another. So, in the context of conversation, nonverbal aspects, body language plays a very important role. The sense of distance plays a very important role. Even when we are you are conversing with somebody over a coffee table, how you are conversing that plays a very significant role. So, you need to be aware of these. I am just touching upon them here, uh, taking a survey with you guys, but later on we are going to elaborate on these. We are going to talk about deceit and a few other things also related to nonverbal communication. And you will be able to link it to conversation and nonverbal communication when you go into the details of that. Context also includes environment, where you are talking, okay. the contexts might be very different and depending on where you are talking, uh, let us say you are talking in a lift, you are kind of squeezed together, 
you are talking in a big room, maybe you are placed at a great distance from one another. The semantic context, the language that you are using, the emotional context, all these things determine the way that the conversation proceeds and you find that the same people conversing and if you take these three parameters into consideration, the conversations will be different. The use of body language will be different, the use of space and territory will be different and in each case the transaction will be very, very different. The reason I am talking about this is to make you aware of the fact that the context is very, very significant and if you develop a sensitivity towards the context, then you, you kind of remember, okay, this is going to work for me in this particular context and in which context, what to say, what not to say, how to converse, how not to converse, these are things you will become aware of. Culture and convention, I talked about men and women in Indian cultural context, I am probably in the western context this may not hold true. So, culture plays a very significant role. Convention is something which is embedded within a culture, something which has been happening within a culture for a period of time. So, everybody follows that. Now, these things play a very significant role. You and I might be good friends, but maybe you are in a high post somewhere and when I am visiting you, I have to follow the protocol. I might have to wait outside, I should not feel offended about it. You have to follow certain protocols. So, in various contexts, even intimate friends have to react, behave in different ways, maybe in a meeting. Back home, they are patting one another's back, but inside a meeting, in, inside a hall, when they are, they are having a meeting, they are talking very, very formally, they are speaking formally, they are addressing one another very formally. So, these things have to be taken into consideration and we need to be aware of them. And power relationship also gets related to that, because you might be friends outside, but within a particular context, one is okay, formally superior to the other. But also, power relationship is something which plays a very significant role in the context of conversations. Because in the conversations, how you are going to speak with somebody, how you are going to converse depends on the power relationship. But everything said and done, the points I made when I would talk to you about the listening and speaking still hold good, which is be honest, be yourself, be sincere. Do not be afraid of speaking about whatever is in, uh, on your mind, but be polite, hint at it. If you do not agree to something, you present it in a indirect way, so that there is always a scope for let us say uh, possible agreement between the two. Now, these are issues which start off with conversation, but which pro probably get linked to other areas like negotiation, persuasion, aggressive conflict management. And these are some of the things which Professor V. N. Giri and Professor Suar will be taking up at a later point of time, but I am just making you aware of them in this particular context. Masks is something which I will quickly touch upon. The moment we start talking in different situations, in different, we start playing different roles. For instance, I am the same person, but the way I would talk with my wife, the way I would talk with my daughter, the way I would talk with my friend, a uh, very old friend, maybe a childhood friend, the way I would talk with my boss. Uh, these would be very, very different. So, obviously, you might say that one of the way analogies you use, obviously, it is it's not a mask really, but it is just an analogy to say that or you can say role playing or whatever you call it. In different kinds of circumstances, uh, with different kind of people, we, we converse in different ways. And this awareness is very, very important, because the sensitivity to understanding that conversations would be very different, our ways of speaking would be very different to different kinds of people is very, very relevant for, I mean, the situation where uh, soft skills are very, very important. So, here are some examples, you can try them out yourselves and you find that uh, each time you are taking up a different role, uh, you are behaving in a very, very different way. You will find that it is automatically happening and uh, you will realize that uh, we switch these roles very easily, very quickly. And if you are not doing that, then probably we need to do that as well. We need to hold on to our beliefs and all that, but our behavior patterns for would be either formal or informal. Our languages, the, the way we use language would be different. Our body language would be different. Now, these things are very, very important and we need to develop a certain degree of sensitivity to these elements. So, telephone is something uh, which is already highlighted and here what I am trying to say is that uh, you need to keep these things in mind, uh, because 
as I had told you earlier, sharing a number of things using nonverbal communication are not possible. And I am just trying to emphasize the fact that this is one very, very important dimension of uh, communications, speaking over phones. And if you try out something which I have just uh, indicated a little earlier, role playing as different persons uh, in real life or face to face and over phone, you will find that strategies have to be again significantly different. And if you try this out, probably it is going to be a good idea because it will help you develop sensitivity to the way that you converse when you are communicating. So, here is the other part of the assignment and I uh, will be asking you some questions when I will be discussing these things with you on the discussion forum. At the end of this, please remember that uh, the human side that whatever you say or do, we get hurt easily, we get offended easily, we feel neglected and human communication is not easy. You need to be careful, you need to be sensitive, you need to have these things in mind at all points of time in order to be a better communicator. Thank you very much.